Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode of Learning in Go, we're going to be discussing about a new concurrency pattern called pipelines. So what is a pipeline? According to Wikipedia, which is a good reference as usual, it's a chain of processing elements arranged so the output of each element is the input of the next one. A way to visualize, th visualize this will be Think about of a process that you need to implement that happens to have multiple tasks and each one of them could be implemented in a way that the way that we are building it could be the output of the first step, could be the input of the second one, the, the, the output of the second one could be the, the input of the third one and so on and so forth. This doesn't mean that they have to be sequential, they could be branching off depending on how the process is supposed to be doing or what it's supposed to be doing rather. and uh, one, cool, one thing to consider when building pipelines is, is that the way, the slowest step that you have in your pipeline will always determine how fast or how slow the whole process is. So maybe in that case, for that specific step, you need to apply a different concurrency pattern. Maybe you need to run those concurrently. Maybe you need to define a few different workers. Maybe you need to queue, and queue them up or whatever reason right so think about it when when trying to implement pipelines pipeline pipelines is not the one all solution for for when trying to build a steps or a sequential steps of uh or, or pro, a, a sequential process that happened to have multiple steps uh, you need to consider that as well and as usual please benchmark everything before you make a decision like this sometimes perhaps it makes sense to have everything in one single coroutine and only the specific step that is taking the longest or the mo too much time will be the one having your using concurrency in, in and using different patterns that I covered in previous episodes. Let's jump into the code so, so I can show you what I mean with this example. Let's go. So as usual, the link to this example will be in the description of this video. Uh, the, the this example is uh, sort of like based on the previous episodes where I cover, you know, finding fan out, uh, um, the error group, and those kind of things. It is using the same idea. We're going to be reading a file called file one CSV that includes a few different uh, values in a CSV format. Uh, all of them have three columns. Oops, and they were just randomly generated. They don't mean anything or they don't have any meaning whatsoever. The way it works with the pipeline uh, concurrency pattern is that each one of the steps will be outputting a channel that will be the input of the next step. Okay. So in the case of the first step, we're taking and reading the file and it doesn't really change of anything that we, I'm not adding anything new that I added before that I previously show you. It's reading the file, creating a channel, returning the channel in this line, and then sending that back to the next step, processing the reading of that file in a go routine right here. And again, for each one of the file, for each one of the lines, it's sending the value to the channel. Okay. For the next step, we are deciding that we're going to be a uh, titulizing. Titleize, titleizing, which consists of taking the first character of each one of the values in the first column and making it uppercase. And for whatever reasons, for our business logic, we need to swap the second and the third value, a uh, uh, second column and the third column, and then and then just swap them basically. So we are doing that in this section below. Now the whole idea of this example is to show you a way to think about of the steps that you have to do when you're processing data, basically a stream of values. Maybe you're connecting or getting values from different APIs and you need to normalize the, all of them. Maybe you're batching results and you're from diff different files at the same time, and then you need to uh, get rid of values that you don't care. You can you do something like this that could maybe improve the performance that you currently have. Now, the last one will be a, a step called sanitize that consists of literally dropping values, uh, getting rid of some of the values that we don't care. In this case, we are saying, hey, the business logic says anything longer than three characters, get rid of it, we don't care. And the output looks like this. So we take uh, the, the files that we have, the file that we have, we read that file, we uh, titleize the first word for all the file, for all the lines, and then we go and uh, use a skip or get rid of the 
those that only have three steps or rather three characters now if i go and modify i want to i want to show you something the the way i have it implemented right here is that it's the same type that is going to be returned by each one of the functions and is the same type that is going to be received uh, by the second and third steps so that doesn't have to be all the time it doesn't have to be the case but it is in this example i just want to make that clear so sanita is receiving a channel of strings and titleize is also receiving a channel of strings that doesn't have to be the case all the time so i'm mentioning that because if we go ahead and perhaps change the order that we have right here so instead of uh, titleizing first we sanitize it first and then we titleize it title titleize it so if we run the same uh, file you will notice that it's the same output but the important thing about this is that uh, I will show you something right here. Uh, I'm going to skip this value. And then if I run this again, you will notice that I'm skipping the values before titleizing. So that could be an improvement in the way that you're implementing your API. Now, let me show you the same. But now, going back to the original implementation where I'm titleizing everything and then sanitizing all the values, okay? So you will notice that I'm uh, skipping this value, but this was already titleized. I keep saying titleized, titleized. So in this case, I'm executing some sort of uh, computation that happens to have before the actual ne next step. So that's how you want to think about your uh, pipelines. So depending on how you want to or depending on the logic and how the data is being modified in this case, for example, you need to think about those steps because it could affect the performance of your final project. Now, one thing that is here uh, in and is not implemented, and I did that intentionally, is I am not considering cases where, for example, the read CSV fails here. I'm saying, hey, it finished reading, but what if? I'm not reading from an actual file. Maybe I'm reading from a network stream from a HTTP request, but if the network is disconnected or maybe uh, it times out, what happens? There is no way for me to communicate that, that information to the next channels. So I encourage you to take a look at this, try to find a way to add some sort of like a channel for can canceling the subsequent steps and please feel free to maybe use the play uh, play uh, golang uh, uh, website to create a few playground uh, links and then put it in the channel in the channel in the in the in the comments so we can we can you know comment and discuss what would be another way to do this now another thing that i didn't include was using context which i'm a huge fan of using context and this kind of thing so again think about this Think of what would you do to modify this example to one, consider maybe cancellation, consider error handling, maybe what if I want to read multiple files and then use a pattern like fanin to combine all the all the all the channels that I'm receiving in this case, what would I do in that case? So again, all of this is sort of like the combination of or using the previous knowledge that we learned in previous episodes, combining all that information and then using that to build a pipeline. Let's jump into the conclusion and I will talk to you in a few seconds. So this is the concurrency pattern called pipeline. It is, again, like I said in the beginning, something that you need to consider and perhaps before actually implementing it, you need to create a few benchmarks, measure, and then compare the results when you were using this pattern and when you were not using that pattern, because in some cases, the thing that you may need to only modify and make concurrent will be the slowest step. And that could be the biggest difference when you make a program using this pattern. As usual, any comments or any, any thoughts about this, please let me know in the comments section below. And again, feel free to take the example that I shared with you, add, add, like I said, add cancellation, error handling, and maybe perhaps you can add uh, something like fanin. I don't know. It's up to you. So I will talk to you next time. Take care. Have a good day.